today, we're going to be talking about warming up. But before I start talking, remember, it's all connected. Hi everybody, welcome back to Swing Strong. My name is uh, Dr. Adrian Miranda. I'm a physical therapist and a fellow swing dancer. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about warming up. I got a question on Facebook about uh, warm-ups that they had an Achilles rupture and they were told that a good warm-up is gonna help prevent a re-rupture. Now, I think it's important to just talk about warming up in general in the swing dance community. And one of the common questions, probably question number one is about stretching. Everybody thinks as a dancer, you have to stretch. And what I would say is that Typically, if you stretch out even just a little bit for short bursts of time, um, it's gonna be beneficial. Now, to hold the stretch for a long, long, long period of time, probably not the best idea to do, especially when you're gonna be doing swing dancing, which is a lot of jumping around, bouncing, moving around, and active. So, a little bit more of a dynamic stretch uh, for your muscles is probably gonna be a better option. So, what I would recommend is do something like a calf stretch against the wall when you get to the dance floor. Well, not on the dance floor, when you get to the venue, uh, but you hold it for about 15 to 20 seconds and maybe you do like three to five times on each side, but it's held for a short amount of time. Because if you think about it, your muscles are like a rubber band. If you hold the rubber band for a really, really long time, it's not gonna have that contraction or that snap back. And you need that when you start swing dancing. So the other question is strengthening. So sometimes we always gravitate towards stretching. But people forget that we have muscles that contract and push us off the floor and move us across the floor. So oftentimes, strengthening is actually a beneficial thing. So something as simple as uh, clenching your muscles to wake them up. As soon as you arrive, maybe you, get, maybe you were driving them, maybe you were sitting on the subway or public transportation, just tensing up your shoulder muscles, pulling back if you're you know, follower or lead and you're having somebody pull on your arm, waking those muscles up by just pulling your shoulder blades back and tense them for two to five seconds a couple times. Maybe squeezing your butt muscles, maybe doing some calf raises or pointing your toes before you even get on the dance floor is gonna wake those muscles up and get them primed and ready to, to go for your swing dance that night or that day, actually. Um, stretching versus strengthening. Now, this is um, an answer that people don't really like, but it depends. So it's always important to do a self-assessment and think about, you know, you know what, I always have to, if I feel, uh, if I feel like I have to stretch out my hamstrings, then that's okay, go for it. Uh, sometimes we overstretch and sometimes we underactivate muscles. In other words, we, we don't tense them up or strengthen them or turn them on, on and off so that they can function during the dancing. So I would say take a self-analysis of, you know, does stretching benefit you or does more strengthening benefit you? And usually, I would actually say, if you're someone who tends to have very loose joints, maybe even like your shoulder, in the past you've had shoulder dislocation, and you just know that your shoulder is more mobile than most people, or you've had a history of it, I would I'll probably say do a little bit more strengthening, like tense up the muscles rather than stretch it. And sometimes there's a misconception that the stretching feels good on some of these joints, maybe your hip joint, maybe you have to cross your legs or bring your knees up to your chest and it feels nice. But sometimes if you're overly flexible, that can actually be detrimental to one, your performance, and also even detrimental in the, sh in the fact that in the long term, it can harm you. So short term, you might feel that nice relief to stretch out that muscle or that joint, but really you're taking a muscle that's already weak and possibly a little bit too loose and just making it looser. So the tautness is that false sense of comfort. And the next one is to honestly analyze your day. If you're someone who's sedentary most of the day, and then you perhaps, you've been working for six hours, you hop in a car, you hop in a bus, you hop on public transportation for 30 minutes to an hour to get to your dance, and then you go right away into dancing, that's gonna be pretty harmful. So taking even just like two to five minutes after you change your shoes or are ready to dance, stay on the side of the dance floor, and just do a couple of warm-ups is gonna be pretty important. But the point is to analyze your day. So if you're someone who works in, you know, as a server or hospitality, or you're moving around in the medical field, um, and you're a bit active throughout the day, you might actually benefit from maybe cooling down and doing some gentle stretches or meditation before you get on the dance floor. Uh, if you're somebody who's sitting a lot, I would actually say, yeah, instead of, you know, going right into the dance, take maybe you know 30 minutes before you leave your home or your workplace, or perhaps you leave the workplace and you go home, spend like 20 to 30 minutes just loosening up, warming up, maybe strengthening some muscles, maybe activating some muscles. 
uh, and then you can go to your dance. And even when you get there, it's a good idea to spend maybe two to five minutes, which is not really that much, and just do whatever your, your body requires. So think about it, if you've been sitting for a long time, you might want to stretch and move around and activate the muscles. And if you've been moving for a long time throughout your work day, then perhaps you might want to actually rest and back off of things. Um, ultimately, what I would recommend is, once you're at the dance venue or your event, go from zero, you know, don't go from zero to 100 really quickly. I would even say, as soon as you get there, change your shoes, you change, you know, your outfits, whatever, you're ready to, you're at the venue and you're this, or is this close and you're ready to go take your first dance. I would even say just take a minute, maybe take a full song and just do very gentle, basic steps. Triple step, rock step, triple step, triple step, rock step. Just do a basic for about 20 to 30 seconds. Then perhaps you get a little bit more intense before you even get with a partner. This is just on in the corner by yourself. And then as the song progressive, you get into it a little deeper. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, and just make sure that warming was pretty important in swing dance. It's so exciting to just get to your event, get to your social, and just rock and roll and just find a partner and start dancing. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe um, and like and comment. And I really hope to be pushing a lot more information out to all of you swing dancers. So until then, swing strong.